Hello, my fellow hunters. There's been some rather interesting news that you've probably already heard because I'm extremely late to the party. But no matter, for there is new arch-tempered on the horizon, Lunastra and Zora Magdaros. So, there you go. Good to look forward to, and I'll see you soon. Wait a minute! The fuck? I must be fucking baked and this shit's probably fake the fucking hell that I just take the fuck! The fuck? The fuck? There's something fucking wrong! The fuck? So, arch-tempered... Sora Macteros! Okay, <laughs> alright, that's... Okay. So, we need, we need to talk about, of course, we need to talk about this. So, today I don't just want to tell you, tell you the news. I want to actually discuss this, because to me, my initial reaction, I won't lie, was... <laughs> you serious? We'll save the many myriad of reasons Magdaros Mayhem might be magnificent for later. First... Lunastra, and while I think we can all say we saw this coming, it's still going to be an interesting one. I mean, my initial reaction is the whole experience is going to be essentially a huge helping of I WANT TO DIE! But a healthy challenge done right is always a good thing in Monster Hunter, but the key there is done right, right? So let's talk about the Arch-Tempered system. At this point, I think it would be remiss to not do. There's been four of the blighters so far. We started with Kirin, which I would say was fine, if a little disappointing, through a combination of our own overhyped expectations and being given no bloody information as to how our tempered system would actually work. I don't think it was too crazy to assume G-Rank-esque new moves, a whole new experience, but really no promises were made that weren't kept because just no promises were made. So, okay, we'll see how Val goes, question mark? And as Val goes, Val goes well. The subtle changes, such as even a new sleeping location, and making him always raise the acid level prior to sleep, yeah, that's a nice little- Ooh, okay! That's the kind of thing we want to see, and it turned a monster that, let's be honest, was badass conceptually, but a little bit of a letdown when it came to the actual fight, into something that can threaten you, and that was a wonderful way to see it implemented. Teostra went back to kind of Kirin level of, that's fine, I guess. And then Kashala was absolute fucking garbage! So there's been some ups and downs, let's say. And for me, the arch-tempered system... I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Because on one hand, I think it was a really promising system with a lot of potential uh, that wasn't quite implemented in a way that really makes it super engaging new content. And it is easy, implementable new content that doesn't take time away from developing actual new monsters and features and keeps everyone ticking over. I have gone after every full gamma set and I've had a lot of fun theorying out what new builds I can do with it. I can't deny that I have enjoyed at least my first fight with each Arch Tempered, except Kushala, <laughs> and that I have gone back to play it. So while, of course, I was a little bit disappointed with the announcement only being a few Arch Tempered's, it's still, hey, fine, a new thing to do in world, and I love the game, so, yeah, but it has been, like, nearly 60 days since a proper full-on new monster announcement, so please, I need, I need something, I need, I need, I need, but yeah, let me know how you're feeling about the whole Arch Tempered, I totally get if you're there, like, eh, at this point, but, talking of Zora Magdaros, for just a moment, I think that actually might be the start and the indication of the Arch-Tempered system suddenly becoming a lot more along the lines of what we hoped for. But again, we'll get to that. Lunastra. I think we can all agree that she was quite the challenging step up from the other elders. She really had a lot of kick to her. She was 
quite the bitch. What? So we have the usual, arguably lazy enhancement of extra health and extra damage, and given Lunastra already had a lot of health, and at the very least her base tempered version, a lot of damage, coupled with a moveset that makes it very difficult to just kind of be near her, and yeah, she's been out a while, so we're all very used to killing her, so she's kind of lost a little bit of that luster, it's still, I think, in the running this for becoming the hardest piece of content in world. And I say that in spite of Extreme Behemoth because it's fair enough that a lot of people find that still a little bit gimmicky and not really, let's say, proper Monster Hunter. I personally loved it, I really did. It was so satisfying to beat, but I totally sympathize and get anyone who's like, well, this is bullshit. So in terms of a traditional monster huntery experience, I think Tempered Arch Lunastra is probably going to take that current top spot in the game for... <laughs> okay, then. And surprisingly, I'm looking forward to that. I like me a good challenge, and while it might be a little bit recycled, you bet I am going to be all over that. Not to mention, then, a gamma set of Lunastra armor. Lunastra armor, I don't need to say, is very potent. So if we get a skill shuffled enhanced slottage version... I think we might be looking at something that can maybe get to behemoth levels. And that is exciting because having a new armor set to theorycraft is easily in the running for the most satisfying thing I find to do in Monster Hunter. So that alone does have me quite... Ooh. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Arch tempered Zora Magdaros. I mean, number one, how are they going to make this feel arch tempered? The initial run on Zora, let's just say I've been to more entertaining funerals. So. How are they going to turn that wet noodle of a walking mountain into something that is actually memorable? Are the lava cores just going to fucking one-shot you now? Because that's not really fun. I think initially then, the first thing I went to when I found out this was real, and by the way, when I first got told, I genuinely didn't believe it. I, I, it took like 25 minutes and multiple source confirmations before I was like, Okay, I guess that has happened, because it's been a long joked about thing in the community. Oh yeah, imagine a tempered Zora. But then no, they just skipped tempered and went to Arch. And by the way, I think that is our bloody fault. We've repelled this old man so many times that he straight skipped tempered and powered up to Arch. We are the agents of our own undoing here. So yeah, initially the thought goes to... Arch Tempered Nerd Gigante being what lands on his back. Like Arch Kushala got a little teaser cameo in the Arch Teostra, this would make sense. However, they need to make the Nergy on Arch Tempered Zora, whether he be Arch or Plain, go away after you've done enough damage to him, not after an arbitrary timer. Why that was ever the initial design choice? I cannot fathom. Zergy. Zergy? By their powers combined! <laughs> Nergy is after Zora for a free all you can eat buffet when he dies. So his plan is to land, look at his clock, and go, Nergy Gante, and I'm here to say, Zora, is this your dying day? I'll eat all your heart and all your other part, and wait, that's my time up. I must depart. And he's he's gone. I didn't even, I didn't even. He's just gone. I didn't attack him, but he's, yeah, no, he's fucked off. God, this is so much fun, and it's just so disappointing. So make the energy go away from damage. Step one. 
Then you have to tune up the time, right? He has to get through that barrier quick, especially if you don't get through the magma cores. They have said that on multiplayer, you will need to split up, play effectively, and really strategically conquer and cover the ground on Zora, so I'm hoping this will be the case. It's a more intense race against the clock, climbing up and down him, you can't get lost, you can't get stuck, you need to get to where you need to go and damage him. Artillery will be key, increasing those cannon shot damages, hopefully Zora will destroy the uh, weapons with a little bit more ferocity, so you have to really use them quickly and well, hopefully you have to do more damage to him yourself, the hunter, to get through his health pool, essentially, if you turn that scenario into a true race against the clock, where you have to be efficient, as well as actually repel Nergy with damage, then you might have yourself an engaging fight and that's really the way I hope and see it going because otherwise it's just going to be anticlimactic once more. Though do let me know what you'd like to see from a fight like this. So the main takeaway is Gamma Zora Magdaros armor because crit status it is fun to do a high affinity status build. It's a fun, novel way to play, and it should be viable. However, it's not, because Zora armor is almost worse than the experience of fighting him. So if we do get Gamma, then we'll get some extra slottage, some skills swapped around. Now, the base skills aren't great, and no Gamma armor has added skills, so that still might be a little bit disappointing. But just having enough slottage to customize a little bit, that might tip the scales, and we might see some really neat affinity-based status builds. And I will definitely make one of those myself, because I really enjoy it. But... We have, then, the potential, the new precedent that Zora Magdaros AT sets. Because before now, the rule set we have known for Arch Tempered is it's an Elder Dragon and it already has a Tempered version. But Zora changes that. Now the only rule set is, is an Elder Dragon. But even then, come on, Zora, it's a spectacle fight, an experience fight. <laughs> Not a great experience, but an experience fight nonetheless. That kind of breaks the mold here. And to me, this gives a lot to look forward to and reasonably hope for. And that is, now, to me, anything being announced as Arch-Tempered is on the cards, even if it doesn't have a tempered version to begin with. Come on, Dodo! And that is exciting. If they're going to get a little bit more creative with the system, if they're going to play around with it in a deeper way, then we should be happy, because that's what we want, it to actually retool the monsters and give a really neat little spin on what they're all about. We want the Arch-Tempered to feel, well, like G rank some new moves, new patterns, faster, a more intense fight with the health pool and damage to actually make it last long enough to get some joy out of it. So if we can start seeing those paths open up, then we should start to see some excellent little additions. For example, imagine Arch-Tempered B-52. Okay, yeah, no, on second thought, don't imagine that. But any of the Tier 2 monsters Arch Tempered would be lovely, just for diversity. And if we get these Gamma armor sets bringing the older, cooler, but let's be honest, not that great looks online, that will be so healthy for the game. Because to use Zora as an example again, his armor set looks beautiful, but again, it's just awful. 
So this is what I want to see. Because imagine, like, Yana Gamma armor. I love the winged knight look of, like, Yana, but it's just not really usable. So please let this be the little taste of what's to come with arch-tempered monsters that we honestly might not expect and break the only Elder Dragon and Tempered Mold. Also, we are getting, with Lunastra, the, um... The Street Fighter Sakura as layered armor for some. There's so many good sets. Like, can we get Odo layered armor? Maybe, or maybe just you know any any of the actual. No, we get Sakura, so we can permanently look like a schoolgirl. That's that's yeah. That would have been my first choice given given the options. Oh, also we get Aloy layered armor. <laughs> I just one moment. Why? So that that's something you can do. Admittedly, the quest to get it is gonna be a lot of fun. A giant and tiny tempered pickle. Yeah, yeah, that'll be <laughs> that'll be an experience. But you never, Joe. It might be easy. <laughs> So let me know your thoughts, everyone, on these revelations. I think out of nowhere, but promising, they can make Zora great. They can make it essentially what it should have been initially, and this sets a little bit of possibilities for some very much out of nowhere arch tempers that we never thought were ever going to happen. That is exciting. Arch Luna is going to be an absolute bastard, but more likely than not, a heart-pounding fun one, and, well, yeah, a nice little pickle quest, so it's it's fine. I think we wanted a little bit more from the announcements, but at least it is something, but damn, give us a Roshikiri and Electrion soon. Hoping for another cool random out-of-nowhere drop at the end of the Autumn Festival, but you never know, really. It seems completely random whenever anything happens, so that's fine. Let me know what you guys think. My name has been Josh. Like, if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon. A oh, good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit. <laughs>